But looking at number one courts, we've had three matches so far, all three of them in straight games, which I'm surprised about. I wouldn't have predicted that prior to the start of play. Next on court is, of course, mixed doubles, and then our last match will be women's singles. Mixed doubles coming up. And it's in the bottom half of the draw. So the two pairs in action, Ho Hanbin and Yu Yang from China up against Tantoe Akmad and Liliana Natsit. Fighting for the right to play either the former world champions, Thomas Leiborn and Kamala Borita Yu, or the number two seed, Sukit Prakamol and Sarli from Tonkan. And of course, England has always had a tradition in mixed doubles. They even won the mixed doubles title here, but I'm not telling you what year. That's going back a, a fair bit. But of course, there was English interest in the second round, and very disappointing for the Olympic silver medalist from Athens in 2004, Nathan Robertson. Of course, he's had a new partner since the Olympic Games when Gail Ems retired from international badminton, now playing with Jenny Woolwick. They lost in the second round. They'd lost in Singapore, I think, in the semi-final stage. So for them to lose in the second round here, yes, it was a tough draw. They came up against the number one seeds. But disappointment from your point of view? Yeah, I think it's tough at the moment. Their ranking dictates that they're not going to be seeded in these events, and uh, that, that makes it obviously more difficult to come through the rounds. And, uh, you know... It is a relatively new combination. The semi-final last week would probably be considered a good result for them now. Um, but, you know, coming into this, they play one of the top Chinese pairs in the, in the second round, and to be honest, it was a little bit quick for them. Yeah. Well, we got a glimpse of what's happening on court number three, and I can tell you it's a men's doubles, because we saw the former world number ones, Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong, a left and right-handed combination from Malaysia. They're playing against Mohamed Hassan and Ronan Septano of Indonesia. And I can tell you it's desperately close in that opening game. It's 18 all. As we see the Olympic bronze medalists, Ho Hanbin and Yu Yang, silver medalists at the World Championships last year in Paris. Lost out to Zheng Bo and Ma Jin in the final. But after that World Championship final, they went their separate ways. Back together again now. And here is the pair of the moment. Tantawi, Akbar, and Liliana Natsir, the number four seeds. Their world ranking after victory last week at the Singapore Super Series event. Then but they've gone to number two in the world rankings and it means that they've won the last three tournaments that they've played. The India Super Series event and a week later they won the Malaysian Grand Prix Gold event and then last week in Singapore, their second Super Series title. They really are a pair in great form and a pair that's very much in the learning process because they only formed their partnership last year. First three tournaments they played in, it was an incredible start to their partnership. Three, three finals, the first three tournaments, winning in Macau and Indonesia Grand Prix. First in the final of Taipei. And the Chinese combination. Well, Yu Yang, the second most successful player in the badminton competition in the Beijing Olympics. Gold in the women's doubles with Du Jing. And bronze in the mixed doubles with her handling her partner of today. Well, there's Tentoi Akhmad, the 23-year-old, though he'll turn 24 next month. Born in Banyumas in the southwest part of central Java. His partner, Liliana Natsia, 25 years of age. As indeed is Yu Yang. Here she is from Liaoning. 
in China. Currently ranked number one in the world in women's doubles with Wang Xiaoli. So for the Chinese pair, only reformed their partnership at the Korean Super Series event at the beginning of this year. So this only their fifth tournament of the year. And only five results counting towards their world ranking, which is why their world ranking seems awfully low at 34 in the world. But they are up 17 places since last week. Both of our match officials from Thailand. Oh, there we have the pair of the moment. Up into the world's top two. Up three places from five a week ago. Now well, the number one seeds, of course. And that 19 and four record translates into three tournament titles. Both of their previous matches very convincing indeed. And when you consider that in the first round there, it was against the Olympic champion, Lee Yongdae, now with a different partner, Ha Jung Un. Winning that in two straight games, 21-17, 21-14. Japanese opponents in the second round. Very convincing in that, 21-8, 21-12. For her Hanbin and Yu Yang. As I was saying, up to 34 in the world rankings. And their record this year, well, this is their third quarter-final. To go with the Korean Open, the Singapore Open, last week. Had a very tough match yesterday, did the Chinese pair against Shintaro Ikeda and Oreko Shiota of Japan. Won the opening game 26-24, having saved two game points. Dropped the second, 16-21 on the third, 21-12 in an hour and nine minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Mohamed and Julia, China. On my left, Makhlui and Liliana Nasser, Indonesia. Liliana Nasser, to serve to her having love all red. Well, can they keep their extraordinary run going? Number four seeds, Tantoi Ahmad and Liliana Natsia. Previous three tournaments, and they've taken three titles. It's not surprising, really, the first meeting between these two pairs, considering that the Indonesians only formed their partnership last year. And the Chinese combination was split for a while. Tantai Ahmad has improved so much over the last 12 months. I think it was the All England we first watched him. Well, was, yeah, I was going to say, Jill, I think he's improved over the last 12 weeks, to be honest. Yeah. 12 months. He's really tactically tightened up his game a lot. 
It's really helping him playing with someone as experienced as Natsir, that's clear. His decision making's improved a lot. I think there's still question marks when he's under pressure, but uh, certainly at the moment playing with so much confidence. The home crowd as well, they're going to be tough to beat here, I think. Yeah. I certainly saw the potential in him when I saw him in uh, Macau and Taipei. Two tournaments in two weeks, two finals, won one of them. But he's beginning to fulfill that potential now. As you say, the most dramatic improvement in his decision making. Yeah, he's always had the shots, but he's not always made the right choices. And uh, over the last few weeks, I would say that's improved substantially. to uh, ask the question, Ian, you know, when this mixed doubles pairing from China, they win the Olympic bronze medal last year, final of the World Championships, and then immediately get split. And at the time, I thought it was a harsh decision or a strange decision, in a way, because, of course, Yu Yang started to play with Xu Shen. Never really gelled in the same way I didn't feel. He Hanbin teamed up with Ma Jin. And they did win a couple of titles, the Vietnam Grand Prix and also the, the Malaysian Super Series event at the beginning of this year. But it seems to me that personality-wise, these two are much better suited together. And they're back together, and I think they're both happy about it. Yeah, I, yes, I think the Chinese have uh, maybe changed their pairs around a little bit too much in the last six months. They clearly wanted to try all of their options before the qualifying period started to make sure they could field their three strongest pairs. But I have to say, I don't think these two have been the winners of it in, in all these changes. They haven't, they haven't got many tournaments, they haven't had a lot of preparation coming into the uh, qualifying period for the Olympics. And they're starting off at a little bit of a disadvantage behind some of the other Chinese players. So I think they've actually been the big losers. Take and fell back the Indonesian and side. Silent. Yeah, just clever from the Chinese, taking the pace off, and Tan Tawi guilty of not moving on to the shuttle there. Just a little bit flat footed, flat footed, let the shuttle come to him and made the mistake. Oh, that's great defence from her hand in. Still signs of Tantau's lack of experience here. He's off balance moving backwards and hits straight onto the backhand defence of Herhan Bin and pays the penalty. Really needed to either switch across to the forehand there or take the pace off to give himself a chance to get into a better position. The Chinese pair taking him for a long time. In fact, the umpire's going to have a word with them. So a two-point advantage to the unseeded combination from China.
Ken Sowen. Of course, Yu Yang will know Matt Sear's going very well. She's not giving Matt Sear any space at the front of the court, very noticeable already. Good short serve and then straight in behind. Not letting Matt Sear get the little block in to get the attack for a partner. Well worked rally. Yeah, that's the danger when that Sear is able to get the attack for a partner. He's very athletic, there we see it. Getting up early, intercepting the shuttle early. And that gets Nats here into that net position to finish. Good little net battle between the two girls there, both of them trying to get the lift for their partners. This time it's Nats here that came out on top. He hit up with the second swing at the shuttle. Oh. Missed it the first time, had another go. Don't but, think he knew oh. it hit it the second <laughs> time. He's still looking around for it. This is going to be good. Oh, it missed it there. Got it there. Didn't know it was going over. It's given up. Oh. change of direction, all of the play throughout the whole rally have been down this left-hand side of the court. That's a probing, and then it's Natsia that takes responsibility, changes the direction to win the point. So just one point in it. Open it game interval. to say that all the years that I've watched Liliana Natsi, I wouldn't actually call her uh, probably the greatest front court player I've ever seen. You've got players like Gao Ling, Gurfei, but she's always been so steady in her play, and that seems an extraordinary thing to say when you consider that she's twice been world champion with Nova Widianto, of course lost in the final of the Olympic Games with him. But she's always tended to be more of an all-court player within her mixed double. She's not the sort of spectacular uh, launching herself towards the net and really hunting the shuttle. I think she's doing it more now. She's not an explosive player, that's sure. But I think, um, obviously, as head coach for England, we came across them a lot with Nathan and Gail and Donna and Anthony when they were up in the top five in the world. What she does very well, she reads the game very well. Yeah. She's in the right place at the right time, she makes good decisions, and she sees the play very early. So you don't get these dynamic, fast, sharp, explosive movements from her, but she's always there. She's always there, she makes lots of good choices, and she creates a lot of time for her partners. Out yeah, well, work that her hand been there. Strange decision here as he comes across to play cross court back to the man. Very bizarre, I have to say. Not a good decision. Put himself in all sorts of trouble. Normally, the man in mix is looking for opportunities to try and isolate the girl onto straight defense so you can attack the girl straight and that gets your your partner into good position. So to go back go back across the court to attack the man is really uh, not a good mix tactic. And that a real missed opportunity from Tentai Upright. And that's 
the sort of rally that I've always sung the praises of Liliana Natsia. When she's not at the net position, she's so solid. She's so aware of what's happening, where the gaps are. She can steer the shuttle. Yeah, it's that vision we were talking about, but noticeable at the end of that point. Yu Yang having a big go at a partner there. He was very static, standing behind her, covering her. He says, you don't need... To... She was saying, you don't need to cover me, you need to cover the space, and she's right. of encouragement to her partner. Interesting point you make there, though, Jill. I think the other thing with this combination is it's clear that Natsi is really enjoying being senior partner. She's gone from junior partner playing with the experience Nova Ridianto. I think she's enjoying taking the responsibility of being a more experienced player on court and dictating the tactics, and she seems to be really enjoying that situation. Yeah. interesting in the early stages of that previous rally all of Tantoi Ahmad's attacking play was directed down to her hand then obviously feel that he's the weaker link within the partnership yeah, so we can disagree with that Ever done it. Chinese back level. Uh, it's a good return. Just tempting you, Yang into playing the shot when it really had gone past her, therefore very, very difficult for her to control. stages and there's once again Lily on and that's her just giving instruction and encouragement. Yeah, that's a better rally from Pantawi there. He's just a little bit anxious on attack and he's been guilty of forcing once or twice but there first shuttle that came up, he played the block to the middle of the court, that put his partner in good position, created a lot of time, and then on it was easy. Oh, it's just wide. Oh, nice, mate. The Indonesians weren't covering that at all. 
Yeah, it's out. It's clear Tantawi, when he gets the chance, he wants to go at Herhan Bin's defence, but it's dangerous hitting onto the backhand defence here. A little bit lucky, he's hit it hard, straight onto Herhan Bin's strongest area of defence there. A little bit lucky to get away with it. Um, backhand defence with most players is the stronger defensive action. With more power and more control. But it didn't even really make him move at all, did it? It was right onto the racket. But it was too tight. That's clever. Oh dear, that's wild. Yeah, again, twice he hit hard onto the defense of her hand in. Now from the midcourt, big swing. Lost control of it and at the back of the court. Step off. Really good play. Two game point opportunities for the Indonesians. Yeah, Liliana Matt's here just saying, come on, bring your base forward. Look for the half court one because anything pushed deep is liable to go long of the back line. from the Indonesians. Turn of serve. 21 19. The margin of victory in 20 minutes of play. And the Indonesians, well, my goodness me. Coach Richard Murphy, from the instruction. And it would look to me as if he's saying, you know, his hand gestures that he's saying, come on, you've got to keep looking for that net, force your opponents back. Well, what do you make of that, Ian? Well, next the area there, net winners, nine to four is the decisive factor there, and it shows how well Natsi has played in that first game. Taking complete control of Yu Yang on the net. And that's been the difference. Well, the Indonesians having secured that opening game 21 19. Just before they start play again. And let me just bring you right up to date because Indonesia's success in this tournament continues. Mahalo Hassan and Bonus Septenol 
have beaten the number four seeds from Malaysia, Kuki and Yat and Tambu Hyong, 21 19, 21 Second 14. Game. Love all. Hey. So here we go, second game. Oh. And I suspect, Thanks, Ian, love. that we're going to see Yu Yang, with all her experience, really trying to pressurise the net. She's going to be living on the net, I think. She's going to be right in Natsia's face. I'm sure that would be the look how close she is there, that's incredible. Yeah. She's going to go for that area, it's going to be interesting to see how the Indonesians react. It's a good return. Better play smash this time. To the forehand defence there, we saw her hand in setting up on that favoured backhand defence. Got no answer to the power smash to his forehand. Maybe Richard Monarchy's had a word with his young charge there and said, get it off that backhand defence. Yeah, yeah, she's not getting back for the flick serve, that's a couple of times she's been very late on it. What a return. It's just about perfect. Just about to say what a good service. Oh. Yeah. It's a great it's serve and what a return. Yeah. Try to hit that one too hard, saw the space. The pace off, got the angle. This time the quick serve is long. Seeing some high quality serving and return again. Great serve and the net roll return. Let's see it again. Look how late she has to take that service. She managed to find the tape with it. Opportunity for her hand bin. Yeah. yeah, and that's it, forced into going cross. Her hand bin stepping in, there was lots of space straight, but he missed it. And the guilty of looking at the space rather than the shuttle. Well, Yu Yang's shoe and socks have been removed. Well, certainly while Yu Yang was paired together with Xu Chen. And I did wonder about the whole combination of whether she should really just be concentrating on women's doubles because her partnership, the new partnership with Wang Xiao Li, quite frankly, in my opinion, is sensational. I think they could possibly take the women's doubles to a whole new level. Well, they're the outstanding pair at the moment, that's for sure. But, I mean, leading up to Beijing, her mix improved dramatically in the last six months before Beijing. She really made herself into a world-class mix player as well. And at 23 years of age, I think she's certainly capable of playing two events. I'm sure that's the thinking behind the, 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 the bringing this combination back together. It gives them another option for the Olympic qualifying period. demonstration of the solid defence of Liliana Natsia. 
and of her temperament, calm in a crisis. Yeah, once she got the chance, she came forward. Interesting early on in the point, it was a partner being moved from corner to corner in the rear court. That's here taking the decision, right? I'll come out, break the game up. serve from a partner. So when three. been forced to play the defensive block return. Let's see if I'm in the space. Well, I don't think anybody had heard, apart from <laughs> Yu Yang, that a service fault had been called. Even the mascot's getting excited behind there. Disappointed with that one. She's above net height. She was in good position to kill. Yeah, she's got onto it and missed it. Well, it's interesting that both Indonesian players are serving so well that her hand bins unable to attack and he's one of the best attackers of short service in the game. He's having to play net returns, and that's causing some problems it's tactically for the Chinese pair. Oh. That's clever. Just enough it's pace over. on the shuttle for a million, and that's it. Yeah, and after the first game, Yu Yang thinking, you know, there was a lot of block return from Natsir, so she's trying to get in very quickly, trying to get early on the shuttle, and Natsir's seen that now, and she's pushing a bit deeper, and Yu Yang's a little bit too close. Mm, that's a clever return. Five-point advantage at the mid-game interval. We only had one point between them in the opening game at this stage. But at a game and 11-6 up, oh, the Indonesians look very strong indeed. Well, Zhang Jun, twice Olympic champion with Gao Lung. Gao Ling, giving his advice. Hot one, 20 seconds. Hot one, 20 seconds. Interesting that the Chinese pair taking their time. The Indonesians were back on court, eager to get on with it. Sign of their confidence, you I suspect. One, six, eight. Efficient attack, well, measured attack in play. Yeah, hitting off the defence there, away from that strong backhand defence onto the forehand side, creating opportunity for his partner. It's better from Tantawi. Appears to me as if Yu Yang has lost confidence now. Perhaps feeling she's got to try and take control, try and make the difference, and perhaps trying a little too hard. Oh, 
yeah, from the Chinese players at sixes and sevens. Disarray now, the Chinese. Don't often say that about them. Well, but she took it so late, there was no drive forward there at all. played in the final of Taipei. I thought that Tintori Akma, this is last year, and I thought he just relaxed a little when they were in a winning position. I'm sure he's learned from that experience. You want to keep the intensity here. Yeah, I think the crowd will help him do that. I don't think he'll be relaxing with this sort of support behind him. Point advantage is restored. has gone. Yeah, certainly Herhan Bin has really struggled in this second game on service and return. He's been, not been able to create any pressure on return. And he looks under pressure when he's coming up to the line to serve now as well. of approval and rightly so because just two points away from a place in the semi-final Here asking the umpire whether that actually touched Yu Yang before it landed out. And the umpire not making the call. Just wide. Of that. Certain, I think. A little bit too late up here. Yes, you can just see Jung Jun, the coach in the background there. He's got hands on hips, he's not looking at all happy. Yeah, all set up with a very good flip serve. This is one of four straight points. The Indonesian fans would like to see this come to an end. Mm. Well. Oh, 
told to change the shuttle by the umpire. He didn't want to. Played by the Chinese pair. Well, this is extraordinary. Six straight points. And it's now getting awfully tight. This is a big, big point. It's a good flick serve too. Well, well, well. Thought so they were down and out of it. And maybe the Indonesian pair did too. Thought they'd already got the match won. Leading 19-10. Now just two points in it. Just the one. Well, what was I saying about taking his foot off the pedal? Saw it before. Yeah, I think he just got nervous with the finishing line in sight. And the Chinese have completely relaxed. They're going for shots. And momentum's really turned. Yeah, it certainly has. This is his inexperience showing through here. Eighteen, nineteen. Well, it was a good flick serve last time to Leon, and that's it. Oh dear, dear. Oh, that's a terrible shot. Nineteen all. Nine straight points. Real inexperience from Fantau there. Rooted to the spot on the midcourt, it was a floaty shuttle, he could have taken the pace forward. Let the shuttle come to him and played a very poor block. And this is just a key point now. Well, he responded in that rally but my goodness they played themselves into a much much tighter situation than anyone in this Astora Stadium thought possible but they have indeed earned themselves a match point oh dear me oh, that's real nerves isn't it Never got into position there. It's an easy attack. 20 all. Extra points required. Oh, dear me. Everybody's feeling the nerves now. Yeah, it's a good return from Natsir, though. It was a good serve from Yu Yang, and Natsir just steering down to the midcourt away from Yu Yang, putting the pressure on her and Bin below net height. And Second opportunity now to close out the match. Good serve. Well, would you believe it? Oh, he's very tense now. That was right, right onto his favoured backhand defence there. So he was gripping a hammer rather than a racket the way he played that shot. Very tense. Crowd trying to encourage their players.
certainly does have a tendency to get a little nervous and I'm very surprised that the umpire has allowed Liliana Natsia off court to go and towel down. Chinese remain on court. Well, she asked if she could go and towel down. He said yes and then perhaps had second thoughts about it and asked her to return. It's match point number three now for the Indonesians. And a third time, it's saved. It's a good rally. And that's gone long at the back line. A roar from the crowd. Richard Manneke still offering instruction. Match point number four for the number four seeds. and it wasn't yes you were right Ian of course the Chinese pair relaxed in their play but in all honesty what on earth happened to the Indonesians when they had such a lead but that's all academic now because there's confirmation of the score 21-19 24-22 yeah and statistics there very very even as you'd expect with a score line like that not a lot to choose between the two teams there. Just overhead winners maybe just telling at the end. What a very close second game. Well, crowd here breathe a sigh of relief. One nineteen twenty four twenty two. Going through to the semi final. Here's the final rally. A big space down that forehand side. Yeah, relief as much as joy, I suspect. Yeah. Well. Tom Torre, Akhmad and Liliana Natsi will play in the semi-final tomorrow, but we don't yet know who their opponents will be. It'll either be the former world champions, Thomas Laybourne, 
and Camilla Rota Yo or the number two seed Sukit Prakamol and Sarali from Tongkam. Well, for a game, and 19 10 up in the second, I thought the Indonesians were outstanding. Well, their confirmation that they're in the semi-final. And as I was just saying, either they'll play the Danes, the former world champions, Thomas Leibon and Camilla Ruta Yul, or the number two seed, Sukip Prakamol and Sarali from Tonkan from Thailand. We already know that last week's beaten finalists, Chen Hong Lin and Chen Wen Sing of Taipei, they're already safely through to the semi-final, having beaten Fran Kuniawan and Pierre. Bernadette in two straight games.